I did almost die. I did. My doctor told me that I, she's, I remember her walking in and saying, we almost lost you twice. And my eyes were like, what do you mean twice? This is a women's healthcare crisis. numbers in a report were staggering. It showed a drastic increase. We're talking about 147 deaths in a single year, a record high for Texas. Now that startling statistic forced the Texas Health and Human Services Commission to react. So the state agency created a new way of looking at the numbers and found they weren't that high, leaving only 56 women on the list. I'm Sarah Feek. And I'm Marzo Dose. We wanted to know what happened to the mothers erased from that list. Don't their deaths matter? And are the numbers truly getting better? Couldn't their stories still help future mothers from becoming statistics too? We met in 2011, um, got married in 2014, and then enjoyed married life as much as possible. We knew we wanted to, we weren't quite sure when. We knew it would just kind of happen. And then I think and then it happened. Yeah. And we were surprised with twins. <laughs> <laughs> I was very excited and then nervous when I found out I was having two. Our goal date was February 5th or 8th. So January 17th, I went in for what I thought was going to be a routine visit. And I remember the doctor looking at me and she just, she said, and I think we're going to have the babies today. And I remember telling her, no, we're not having the babies today. Like, they're not ready, I'm not ready. At some point, the room fills up with doctors and I'm getting worried because there's a lot of people in the room and um, really, they're moving around, they look a little anxious. So then I got anxious and I asked the doctor, is she okay? They came in to get me, hey, uh, your, your wife gave birth and um, you, have, you know, the kids are fine and they're uh, you know, finishing up their, the surgery. I basically never woke up from the surgery. I never fully regained consciousness. I think I was kind of in and out. Um, and then my organs started failing and immediately I was put into a medically induced coma because it was that bad. Leah was diagnosed with HELP syndrome, often linked to the more common condition, preeclampsia. It causes high blood pressure, severe swelling, and can be deadly. I was in the ICU for... About 10 days. <laughs> so I was making videos of the kids, even if they were crying, and I was just playing um, the videos at night uh, to you and I was hoping that um, throughout all that you would um, you would hear them or you would notice them. I had them on January 17th. On January 31st I got to meet my babies for the first time. I remember them bringing them to me and they put both of them in my arms and I, I didn't have the strength to hold them so they had to put lots of pillows so they had to request extra pillows to put underneath my arms. and. It was such a great moment to know. It was like that was the time when I, I looked at them. I knew that that's when I needed to fight hard because I still didn't fully understand what was going on. And I didn't realize how sick I was. Um, but I knew that these two little people needed me um, holding them. And when I first started talking, my voice was very shallow from being intubated for a really long time. So my, I practically whispered. And I remember saying hi to them, and both of them opened their eyes and looked at me. And it was the best, best feeling in the world. Leah was lucky. Many women don't make it, and not all of their stories are so clear, which is why a state task force started removing some names. 
In many cases, researchers said there was no evidence of a pregnancy. Others, there just wasn't enough information. And other women died more than 42 days after giving birth, the international standard for labeling a maternal death. How confident is the state in the numbers? So based on what we have done in the enhanced method, we are confident in the methodology. additional data analyses, we do extend that time period because we know that there's additional information that's very important uh, that can help us in the work that we're doing. Uh, we know that one death is one death too many. So we know that there is work to be done and we know that we can do better. I had a blood clot in my lung, apparently, and I stopped breathing. It's like one moment I'm in labor and the next moment I wake up and my son's there and I don't remember really what happened. I was one year postpartum and I was 34 years old and all of a sudden I had the signs of a heart attack. I was terrified. I didn't want to fall asleep even though I was exhausted because I was afraid I wouldn't wake back up. My experience um, was a little shocking. I felt like I was having a heart attack, like I couldn't breathe. And I had to scream, I had to beg for help to say something is wrong, I'm, I'm not gonna make it. I literally could have died from that. I could have gone into full cardiac arrest and I would have been one of those statistics. And so when the report came across my desk, uh, my, my freshman term, it really was very riveting to me. It's shocking that we still don't really have the most reliable data in Texas. And so that's one of the things that I'm going to be working on next session, is trying to create a centralized data registry. Representative Theory wants that registry to include mothers the state has removed from its official list, because broader statistics could highlight the severity of maternal deaths, perhaps setting a new standard beyond Texas and prompting more awareness and training. How can you disregard those numbers? Well, that's part of the problem. That's why we need the data registry and the data bank. Um, right now, if a woman were to pass away 43 days after she gave birth, that's not considered a maternal mortality, even if it was a pregnancy-related death. I've got a bill right now. I've got legislation that I'm requesting. My office is working on this as we speak. What I want to do is I think something bold has to happen. We have to have cultural competency training starting at our medical school levels all the way into our current profession. One of the most important things we found, and I want everyone to be aware of this, is that the majority of the deaths, whether the women were Caucasian, African American, Hispanic, Asian, the majority of the deaths were preventable. All right guys, we've got one more minute in this round, one more minute. I was never sick. I was active, I was a fitness instructor, nutritionist, I mean, I did everything by the books. Here we go, guys. I never even considered dying. I never thought that I could get this sick. I mean, I never thought that I'd be fighting for my life. Yum. I'm not sure it could have been preventable, but I think it might have not been as severe. If I was educated on what to look for, and sometimes I wonder, like, why me? And then sometimes I think maybe, not that I was supposed to go through it, but now I'm getting to, to educate other people. Lawmakers are considering representative theories built right now in the legislative session. Now keep in mind, all those numbers that we mentioned were just from one year, 2012. The state is now looking at debts in other years to see if those numbers will change too. This year, the state is also rolling out a new system with an extra verification step that prompts anyone who fills out a death certificate to confirm a pregnancy before submitting a death record. Now we work with ProPublica to find the women you met in our story. You can help other mothers and the state better understand this problem by sending us a video diary. Maybe you've had a complication with pregnancy that risked your life. Or maybe you know someone who died after giving birth. Upload your video now on the homepage of KXAN.com. We hope to hear from you.